You passed him yours and he tilted his smoothie over. You took a sip and had to suck up a large strawberry chunk before the actual smoothie came up the straw. It was mostly smooth, with the delightful tiny crystals of ice and the occasional bit of fresh strawberry. It matched well with the crap with even more berryness. Cove enjoyed his sampling too. He had a giant smile on his face and looked almost disappointed when you swapped back your treats. I mean, I do like to be very extravagant with my food, Cove. With that, Cove started to eat his treats in earnest. You saw him take a huge gulp of his smoothie, and then without swallowing, he added a bite of his lemon crepe. His habit of mixing foods together wasn't anything new. He hummed in satisfaction, so you guess he must have liked the combined flavor. Cove? Terry tore off a piece of her crepe and held it out to Cove. So? Care to make a trade? Sure. Instead of continuing to loiter in the parking lot, the four of you started to walk down the sidewalk. There was a lot of sharing going on, with crepe bits and toppings being passed around. You wouldn't have been surprised if Terry ended up drinking more frap than Miranda did. You kept going down the way, eating, drinking, and chatting. You hadn't realized just how far the group had wandered until you ended up at the now leaving sign. Apparently, you were about to walk right out in the middle of, into the middle of nowhere. Terry took her mouth off Miranda's straw and stopped sipping the frap. Impossible! Preposterous! How are we already at the end? I always forgot how tiny this town really is. Cove chuckled a little and swallowed a chunk of Terry's crepe. I guess. It kinda is, huh? It didn't feel that small when we were going- It didn't feel that small when we were growing up. It definitely felt bigger then. It always seemed like there wasn't much here. There were tiny air places out there. You guys are lucky to live in a decent sized cities. You quietly nodded along. You shrugged. I mean... I don't know. I'd be... I probably would shrug, but I'd probably say there are tinier places out there. You felt defensive over your hometown. Sure, Sunset Bird wasn't the city, wasn't the city, but it was still something. It wasn't a one-stop-light town where you could drive through Main Street in 30 seconds and see everything the town had to offer. I guess this means we should probably head back. One doesn't just walk into nowhere land. <laughs> We're not only one, Terry. There's four of us. Terry scrunched up her face, not wanting to acknowledge the bad joke. She decided to ignore it. Uh. It stinks having to go all the way back. Yeah, but it's not like there's anything out in that dire- There's not like there's anything out that direction. And if we did keep going forward, it'd be an even longer trip home. You started off into the stretch of road as Cove agreed that he didn't want to go out any further. Can we take a break here first before we turn around? We've been walking for a while and someone finished my drink. Someone finished my drink. Right on cue, Terry loudly sucked air from the straw. It was so good. Miranda looked at her, but Terry remained unrepentant. In the end though, it was agreed to hang around the sign before heading back to the car. It didn't take long to finish the rest of the food and drinks. Everyone gathered up the trash and stuffed it into bags and pockets for now. The group relaxed on the grass, keeping account of all the cars that drove past. It was not a high number. Mm. 14. The newest passing car drove into town from the newest passing car drove into town from somewhere outside. But as the vehicle came by, it slowed down and you watched as it ultimately rolled to a complete stop. The black car parked right by the now leaving sign. Everyone exchanged a baffled look. But then the tinted window rolled down and the driver peered out. As soon as you saw his hair, you recognized him. No one else you knew presented themselves so distinctively. Oh, it's that dude. Yeah, Baxter. Stockman. Hey, neighbors. Cove also jolted with recognition. He pasted on a cordial smile and waved politely. Afterwards, he put his mouth back over the straw of his long, empty drink, as if trying to act cool. You waved at him. Hi. You just wondered what he was doing there. You wished he hadn't stopped to chat. You smiled and were excited to see him. I mean... I wouldn't say I'm excited to see him, but I'm at least going to be, like, polite. I'll say, hi. You inhaled and tried to be loud enough to account for the distance and car noises. It's nice to see you again. Somehow he was able to project his voice in such a way that it still sounded smooth, even though he was definitely speaking loudly. You wondered where he'd learned to do that. And you thought about the odd picture this made. A fancy black car pulled over to talk to a group of teens, mostly still in beach wear. Miranda was incredibly confused and shrank back to watch. Terry tilted her head in an unspoken question. Cove made a quick gesture pointed towards back to Sir, and a light bulb went off for Terry. All right. Ah, that's the new person in the condo. The B-Man, right? Yeah, back yeah, Baxter. Oh. 
Oh, I wasn't sure if I'd actually ever, if I'd ever actually see him. Her voice was quiet. Miranda usually got shy around new people. Terry was quite the opposite. <laughs> Incredible. This is perfect. Terry hopped up from the grass and ran to Baxter's car, all full of excitement. Behind her, Miranda picked herself up and dusted imaginary dirt off her clothes. She sent a searching look to you and Cove, to which Cove shrugged, Miranda nodded, and with clenched fists, hesitantly followed Terry. Terry bent down to talk to Baxter through his window. She blasted through introductions, with Miranda putting in a shy wave. Cove looked at you. He still clearly had no intention of going over. Cove really doesn't- See, Cove doesn't really like Baxter. I get it. He can come off a little creepy, but um, I don't know. I'm willing to give him a chance. I'm willing to get to know him more. He's certainly not Jeremy. I mean, if it was Jeremy, I'd just be like, yeah, bye Felicia. But for Baxter, I'm willing to give him a chance. Who knows? He might surprise you. You stayed with Cove. You went over to Baxter. You encouraged Cove to come. I'm encouraging Co Cove. Be nice. Let's just, let's just see him out. You encourage Cove to come. Come on, let's go and see him. Go on and see him. Cove pouted, his cheeks flared into out in a childish puff. I don't want to. I don't know what to say. Fine. You can go. I'll just wait until he's gone. You really should come. You can do it. Do you want to be the only person who doesn't go see him? Well, why can't you stay here with me instead? Because I, the polite thing to do is to say hi to him. You sighed. He was definitely going to be difficult about this. Some days he really was that same grouchy year old you met all those years ago. You stayed with Cove, you went over to Baxter, you physically pushed him towards the car. Do you really hate him that much? No, I wouldn't... I would not force Cove to Baxter. But... If I feel like the right thing to do, the polite thing to do is to go over and talk to Baxter, I'm gonna leave Cove and talk to Baxter. You know, I'm not gonna... I asked... I informed Cove, I'm gonna talk to Baxter, I think you should too. Cove clearly told me I don't want to, so I'm not going to force him, but I'm also not going to stay with Cove. You went over to Baxter. Cove waited in the grass without another word. You joined the other two and stood next to Baxter's car. He smiled genially at you. Nice to see it's, you. It's Cove's choice. It's Cove's choice to stay behind, and I respect that choice, but it's also my choice to try to be polite and talk to Baxter, and Cove should respect that too. It goes both ways. Vaughn, it's very nice to see you once more. Again, this is talking from a kind of person who who likes rela like relationships where we're not 100% attached to the hip all the time. And that goes, f and both myself and my husband are very much like that. We're very independent when it comes to that kind of stuff. He gestured to Miranda and Terry. I just rented this car for my stay here and was coming back from a bit of sightseeing when I spotted your crowd. Then these two were kindly introducing themselves. It's a polite thing uh -huh. to do. Yep, yep, it's only polite. Thank you, Terry. Same brave went length. Speaking of polite, since you know us, you should give us a ride. Terry. Her voice was whispered, but her tone was clear. This was not Miranda approved. What? Then we won't have to walk back to the parking lot. I'll take care of it. Miranda bit her lip. Terry, clearly not seeing the problem, pointed at Miranda and turned back to Baxter. You wouldn't make a cute girl trudge down this empty road, right? Look at her. Baxter did. Miranda smiled comfortably and he grinned playfully. Why do I feel like maybe she's not his type? Uh, actually, I don't, I'm not really sure, but... Of course not. Consider me at your service. Yes! She spun around and tried to wave Cove over. You could tell from his face that he was already alarmed. Get over here. Baxter's giving us a ride. Get over here. You could make out his frown in the distance. However, he did start to drag himself out of the grass. You were just happy to get a ride. You were kind of annoyed that Terry did this. You felt uncomfortable. Um, you felt uncomfortable to be getting a ride from Baxter. I am not annoyed at Terry. I wouldn't say that I'm happy to get a ride. But I'll say I'm feeling uncomfortable. You feel uncomfortable getting a ride from Baxter. But again, I'm giving him a chance. I'm giving him a chance. You didn't know Baxter well enough to feel safe with him driving. All the more reason to ride back with him to get to know him more. Sure, you doubted he was going to kidnap everyone or something. Your group had the numbers and you were pretty sure you could all take him in a fight. But it still felt weird. You weren't in the habit of climbing into random people's cars. It always felt awkward. The seats, the smells, and everyone's car etiquette were always different. 
You felt stressed out that Terry had put this on you. I wouldn't call it stressed. I wouldn't call it stressed. Miranda looked down and put on a put on a polite smile. Um, um, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Terry did have a point. It would have been inconsiderate to abandon you here. And after all, your company is a favor to me. Miranda laughed a little, and Terry slung an arm over Miranda's shoulder with a big grin. Seeing the reactions, he made a point to search for yours, too. You didn't give him much of a response. You rolled your eyes. You were flattered. You thought it was funny. You frowned. You hoped Cove would get there soon. Um... Miranda laughed. I mean... You didn't give him much of a response. I mean... I'm gonna try to, like, be nice. So I'm gonna say you thought it was funny. Cove stepped up to the car, his expression now inscrutable. Hello. Um. Uh, hi. Alrighty, plan made. Let's hop in. You hesitantly opened the back door and slipped inside. The car was clean and smelled of air freshener. You stared at Cove for reassurance as you scooted all the way to the other side. Cove squeezed into the middle after you. Miranda took the last seat in the back and you all tried to awkwardly buckle up. Yeah, that's always awkward when there's three people in the back. Were back seats really made for three adults? It honestly didn't seem like it. Terry gladly took the shotgun seat and had all the room she wanted. Does that sound alright? Welcome to my vehicle. I hope everyone is comfortable. And if someone could point me in the right direction, we can be on our way. Terry went back to navigator mode and outlined their journey. It was basically a straight line with one turn at the end into the parking lot. Baxter nodded from up in the driver's seat and pulled back into the road. Luckily, the street was still dead empty. It took no time at all for Baxter to park right next to Cove's car. There wasn't even enough time for a proper conversation to start. The occupants didn't seem to mind. There, was all, there were smiles all around when Baxter parked next to Cove's car. Woo! Miranda clapped quietly as Terry cheered. Cove chuckled nervously. You smiled. Yeah! You clapped as well. You nudged Baxter in a friendly way. You were relieved you had made it. I'm just gonna say... Um... I, would, I mean, I, I think clap is a little overkill in terms of what I would actually be feeling. I don't think I would nudge Baxter in a friendly way. I would say... I would... I would smile. I'd be like... You smiled. You were glad to have reached your destination and pleased at the fanfare of your friends. You didn't say a word, but Terry and Miranda definitely caught your amusement. We are arrived. We've arrived. That was easy. Terry flung open the door and climbed out. Thanks. Thanks. Everyone else exited the car as well. The group thanked Baxter with varying degrees of enthusiasm. Baxter himself got out too. Everyone con congregated again in front of Baxter's and Cove's cars. Cove looked at the back of his uh, got, looked at the back of his and frowned. He'd finally discovered the wash me you'd put on it. Hmm. Huh. I wonder who did that. I would admit it. You snickered along with Miranda, who realized you'd been caught. Ooh. It's a mystery. Right. Terry bounced over to Baxter and offered her her hand offered her hand for a handshake. He accepted it easily with a charming grin. You're a pal. <laughs> You're too kind. It was no trouble whatsoever. I'll be keeping this car all this summer. If it suits you, you're welcome to take my number and give me a ring whenever you're in need of another ride. And that goes for everyone here. I have a car. Terry busted into laughter and Miranda fidgeted. She did not know what to do with that. Baxter really went fast, didn't he? He noticed her discomfort and smiled with a so soft tilt of the head. I just feel like Baxter, like deep down inside, has some insecurities. You know, he seems really confident and smooth and suave, but maybe he's... Maybe the reason why he seems to be so... Um, maybe the reason why he's acting really strong about, you know, forming these friendships is because maybe he's a little desperate of having friends. Maybe he's a little too much for some people and too intense for most people and therefore he actually doesn't have that many friends and because of that he's like trying almost too hard to make friends that's just a i don't know that's just a theory of mine i'd be happy to help again it but that's the only reason but that's the only reason i offered if you didn't need it you can pass on it can I have your number? You stayed silent. I mean... I mean, I, I have my boyfriend. <laughs> my boyfriend has a car. 
I wouldn't stay silent, but I wouldn't say, can I have your number? I would just say, okay, well, thank you, politely, but not ask for the number. So I don't like, there really should be at least a third, a third choice in this dialogue decision, because I don't really like either of these. I would at least be polite. Um, you stayed silent. When her giggles subsided, Terry put a hand on her chin with brows furrowed. Hmm. Hmm, I wonder, would that option be available right now? You could valet us somewhere cool. What? What? Cove was taken aback. He put a hand on the hood of his car. Weren't we going back to the neighborhood? Wasn't Baxter going back to the neighborhood too? Why would we go somewhere else? Because we can. Miranda squirmed nervously and then committed to piping up. Maybe? We could go to the park near my place. It's a really nice place to hang out. You and Cove shared a look. The big park was pretty nice. Let's do it! Baxter tapped the side of his face and thought. It's doable. That sounds doable. He glanced at Cove and then switched focus on you. Well? Well, we have two cars. If some people want to go to the park, I could still take the others home. But if everyone's going, it wouldn't make sense for me not to. You decided to go back to the neighborhood with Cove. You wanted to continue to hang out to... You wanted to continue the hangout session at the park. Yeah, I think I really want to give... Uh, I want to have more opportunities to get to know Baxter. Because right now, I feel like there's more to him. And I need to get to know him more before I can really assess whether or not I actually want to hang out with him more. Um, so yeah. I want to continue... Let's hang... I'm going to encourage Cove to come hang out at the park. You weren't really, you weren't ready to head tag out yet. You came to a decision and turned to Cove. Let's go to the park. All right, park time it is. He smiled a little. Terry cheered and Miranda nodded happily. You felt like you made a good decision. Yeah. I'd like to think so. To the car, again. And if we end up going and it ends up being a flop and if Baxter rubs us the wrong way, then I'll know for sure that, you know, he's just not a compatible person for me to spend an exorbitant amount of time with? We'll see. Only time will tell. Which car? There are multiple. You watch to see if Cove or Baxter had an answer. Cove sighed and ran ahead through his hair, threw a hand through his hair. He tapped on his car's hood nervously. I guess. We can go in Baxter's, I guess. It'll be less of a pain than bringing both. We're all going to the same place. Are you, are you okay with that, Baxter? Certainly. I meant what I said. When you need a lift, I can give it. Neither you nor Terry brought up any objections, so the gang climbed back into Baxter's nice ride. This time, Baxter offered to turn on some music. After all, it would be a little bit of a drive to the park. Play what you normally would. Don't mind us. Can we see what's on the radio? I'd rather not have any. Um, play what you normally would. Don't mind us. Yeah, I kind of I kind of want to... I kind of like when people give me a sample of what they listen to on the radio. Yeah, I would like to see what kind of stuff a guy like you is into. Exactly what I just said. I hope the playlist lives up to expectations. He plugged his phone into the car with an aux cord and turned on some alternative music. With the music taken care of, Baxter put the car in drive and pulled out of the parking lot. The lot was practically empty, but you noticed that he was careful anyways. Good, he's a good shot driver, I like that. During the trip, it changed to hard rock, punk, and even screamo. Despite his personable demeanor, he didn't seem to like upbeat tracks. It took a while to arrive. By the time you got there, the sky was golden with the orange streaks of sunset. Everyone got out of the car and started to stroll along at one of the paths. You walked by the basketball court and some picnic tables, taking in the sights. This is the place where we had the 4th of July, like, moment. Miranda seemed amazingly content, the location helping her relax in the company. She led the way, sometimes stopping here or there to point something out. Baxter turned to her and nodded along. Not I've bad. never been here, but I definitely see the appeal. Man, this is Randy's stomping ground. She's been coming here forever. <laughs> oh, and I think this is also, isn't this also where um, Miranda had her birthday party? I think. Seriously, Miranda, have you ever had a birthday party that wasn't here? Yeah, it was also cool. I remember that too. You missed out, Baxter, because every year she uh, she has a blowout party at the park. Imagine balloons everywhere. Miranda looked down, suddenly shy again with the attention on her. She let out an awkward laugh. <laughs> yep, every year. Actually, my birthday is where I first started to really get to know Cove and Vaughn. That's true. 
She smiled and pointed to a wide, flat spot in the grass. Remember the bounce house? <laughs> I remember. He chuckled and you could practically see those old memories on his face. It was a party for the ages. You were great. Yeah, it was a blast. I miss parties like that. Everyone is too cool for bounce houses. Oh yeah, that did happen. You shrugged. You quietly nodded. I miss parties like that. Everyone is too cool for bounce houses. The group followed Miranda along to one of the picnic tables. She took a seat and Terry slid in beside her. I'm kind of disappointed that that response didn't get a response. That dialogue choice didn't get a response from anyone. Nobody? Nobody? Okay. You spent the evening chatting amongst each other. Everyone got to know Baxter a little better. Although you could tell Cove and him still didn't, still hadn't fully clicked. At one point, Miranda found an abandoned soccer ball and started tossing it around. To me! Miranda threw the ball to her. Terry caught it with a smile. Think fast! She chucked it at Baxter, who had only enough time, who had only had enough time to squeak. It bounced off his chest and he stared at it dazed. He blinked as if he needed time to process what exactly had happened, but then grinned dangerously. He rushed after the ball, and rather than throwing it back, he surprised Terry and everyone else by lobbing the ball high into the air. You bent your neck back to watch its ascent and inevitable decline. Baxter hooked it with his foot and launched it up again. There were oohs and ahs from Terry and Miranda. Baxter gave them a very proper bow. When it finally fell to the ground for real, Cove was the one who picked it up. He was impressed, and he wanted in. Ooh, snap, here comes that rivalry. With that, everyone was drawn to the game. It was unspoken that whoever did the fanciest trick won. Most of the gang was not particularly practiced with throwing a ball, so not many of the tricks were actually good. However, there was a lot of laughter, and you got to see Miranda pull off a round, a round off where she threw the ball with her feet, so that was cool. The sunset eventually darkened in the night, and the street lights turned on. Your group's chosen picnic table laid in a bubble of light. The occasional bug cast a shadow as they flew by. It's a little strange being here so late on a normal night. Usually, that only happens if there was a party, or an important game, or a fireworks show. Fireworks! Her yell startled Baxter, who was throwing the ball nonchalantly from hand to hand. He missed catching it and sailed sadly back and it sailed sadly back to the ground. He looked at Terry for her loud outburst. I just remember there's gonna be a fireworks show tonight. It's in the city. At everyone's questioning looks, she huffed and tried to explain further. It's some celebration for the opening of something. I don't remember what. I don't think we could get into the actual event anyways. Oh yeah. But we should still be able to see the show if we get close. You can't keep explosion in the sky away from the public. Cove raised an eyebrow and drummed his fingers on the table below him. You want to change locations again? Wasn't the last two times enough? Yeah, I mean, I understand this. Cove is, I think as at his core, he's still introverted. And introverted people can get easily worn out, tired of socializing for too long. So I get that. Um, Terry rolled her eyes and then shook her head. To her, it was obvious. Don't be a wet blanket, Cove. What about you, Vaughn? Randy? Baxter? Don't you want to see the fireworks? Honestly, I do. It's fireworks. We gotta go. Cove's right. That's too much. He didn't say anything. I'm gonna say, it's fireworks. We gotta go. Sorry, Cove. I'm an extrovert. Sorry. I guess they are fireworks. All right, whatever. What's one more scene change? Yush! I knew this is, gonna, this is a good idea. I know that I'm sort of like nudging Cove out of his comfort zone and nudging him past his, you know, challenging his limits. But, I mean, hopefully, like, the fireworks will remind him of that really awesome moment when we, when we saw fireworks in the park from before, when we were kids. In turn, four sets of eyes looks to Baxter. As the driver, his answer made or broke the plan. He chuckled softly. In for a penny, in for a pound. I'll go. Honestly. Genuinely, there's nothing better to occupy my time tonight. So we better hurry or we might miss it. Cove rolled his eyes but laughed. Everyone headed back to the car yet again. Terry brought out her phone to navigate to the city and Baxter stepped on the gas. You were on your way. Baxter drove past buildings aglow in warm yellow light that cut through the navy black light. One office building had bright LED lights that cycled through a whole rainbow of hues. It was difficult to get through all the traffic on the road, let alone find parking this late at night. Luckily, Miranda had eagle eyes when it came to scoping out a spot. She pointed to a sedan pulling out and Baxter parked within seconds. Not wanting to miss the show, you all raced down the waterfront walkway to find a place with a good view. 
<laughs> this is the spot where we saw Shiloh. <laughs> it's too soon. Broken hearts, too soon. Oh, Shiloh. How, how could you, Shiloh? What about here? Cove peered across the rails into the distance and shot her a thumbs up. It was relatively quiet, isolated, and you could see skyscrapers. That was a good sign, based on where Terry thought the event was. Yes, yes, this should work just fine. She stopped and tried to catch her breath. Her hands on her knees, Miranda leaned against the wall between establishments as she recovered. Cove wasn't even breathing hard. He stood by you with a slight smile on his face. He only let out a relieved sigh. Think we've missed anything? No way. Not a chance. Nothing's happening and we can't be so late that we missed everything. Maybe we'll start soon. You felt excited. You thought this was kind of a silly situation. You were nervous about how, the clips, the, how close the fireworks would be. You felt pretty laid back about the whole thing. I mean... Fireworks... So, if I was being honest, I feel like I saw fireworks pretty often as a little child. That by the time that I that as I got older, they kind of lost their their shininess. Like I I don't think I was particularly excited about fireworks necessarily when I was this age as a teenager. Um, so I mean they're impressive, but I feel like when you see fireworks a good number of times, you're like, eh, you know, they're fine. Um, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna feel pretty laid back about the whole thing. Sure, the fireworks were something that you'd like to see, but you weren't overly invested in the show. You were with your friends, and that was already something. Fireworks would happen, or they wouldn't. You would accept it either way. Nowadays, I am more excited about fireworks, mostly because they are a lot more symbolic and meaningful. Because, believe it or not, my husband and I, we got married on the 4th of July. That is our anniversary, July 4th. Um, and it's cool because the entire country, United, the, the entire United States of America, celebrates our anniversary every year with fireworks. So I've come to appreciate fireworks a lot more due to that connection. Um, yeah, you were with your friends and that was already something. Fireworks would happen or they wouldn't. You, would ex you could accept it either way. Terry led Miranda to sit down on the oval slabs along the path. Miranda took a seat and began tapping her knees together as she waited. Terry, meanwhile, crouched more than sat. Baxter smiled politely and looked from you to Cove. He seemed to be waiting for one of you to speak first rather than wanting to directly start a conversation. I'll start. Something seemed to strike Cove as he tried unsuccessfully to hide a smile. Most of us are in swimsuits. Wearing beachwear in the middle of the city in the dark while waiting for a fireworks show was clearly a joke of, of the day for him. Cove snorted once and then looked back up to the sky. A flash lit up the sky with a brilliant green. Now that is beautiful, actually. Not gonna lie, that is pretty. Your eyes flew off the building in the distance and silently watched the, with bated breath. You heard a second boom and a red firework lit up the night. Woo! The show's starting! It's so pretty! They came running over to get closer, positively beaming. Terry pressed herself to the waterfront fence, getting as close as physically possible without just going without just going swimming again. More fireworks went off, shooting out hundreds of tiny sparkling lights. The colors stood out as starkly against the dark of the night. The biggest ones washed your surrounding with their hue, turning your world blue, and then red, and then golden. Welcome. Did I deliver or did I deliver? Yeah, I'm gonna have to give you that one there, Terry. I'm glad we came. Miranda's eyes glittered, and she lightly bumped Terry with her hip. Hopefully Cove was glad, too. Good job. Terry stumbled at the friendly nudge, but was pleased with the compliment. She grinned back. Miranda lightly swung her hips the opposite way to give you a bump as well. It was, a fr it was friendly and soft. Woo! We did it! You smiled at her and nodded. You were pleased that you hadn't missed any of the shows after all. You were glad that everyone seemed to be having a good time. You were you were uncomfortable with how near it was. No, fireworks don't scare me. You were pleased that you hadn't missed any of the shows after all. Despite how unorthodox the impromptu fireworks plan had been, you were ecstatic it worked out. Luckily, you arrived in time, and it was shaping up to be a particularly colorful fireworks show. The rest of the group huddled around the railing to make in to take in the show as closely as possible. Miranda stood close by. Terry's hands gripped at the top. 
Cove laid his arms across it while leaning forward, and Baxter rested his elbows on the rail, putting his back towards the fireworks. 